What's up, guys? Welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, with a glorious American accent and not an Australian one. <coughs> Voice you can today. Subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story's called I Don't Work Here. I Don't Even Live in the State. I'll be referring to my grandmother in the German term for grandmother, which is Oma. That's just how I was raised to call her, and I feel more comfortable saying that. If you are having trouble, just substitute grandma anytime you read Oma. Now, this happened some years ago when I just turned 15. My Oma invited me to Colorado to visit her for a while, and I was all for that since I don't see her too often. A couple days into my stay, we went to buy some groceries. As my Oma was at the other end of the aisle, I was given permission to look for some cereal I might like. That was when I heard someone to the side of me ask for some help. Now, I am pretty shy and usually try to avoid contact with people, but when someone needs help, I gladly jump in to assist them. Excuse me, little miss, would you mind helping me grab this bag of cereal? I can't reach it. A little old lady got my attention. She will be nice old lady for short. Sure, no problem. Now, I'm not considered amazingly tall. I'm just about average at 5'5", five five, but this lady was barely 5 feet. Just to reach the bag of cereal, I had to stand on my tiptoes and reach for it. But I managed to get it down and helped put it in her card. Thank you so much, young lady. God bless you. Nice old lady said. It wasn't an issue. Do you need help with anything else? No, thank you. My son is actually shopping with me, but he had to run out to the car to get his wallet. Okay then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I waved her off before turning around to go back to my Oma, who was still trying to make a decision whether to buy one thing or the other. It's been a while, so I can't remember exactly what she held in her hands. Then suddenly, a rough tap on my shoulder prompted me to turn back around. My eyes met with this middle-aged lady who was wearing workout gear. She shall be named Karen, as it is only right in this sub. Excuse me, do you know where the ice cream section is? Karen said. Seeing as I've only been following my Oma around and not paying attention, I could only respond, Um, I can't think of where it is. I haven't been here before. Oh, you're a new worker? Shouldn't you be accompanied by another person before helping people? She seemed curious. Realizing what Karen is thinking, I say, Oh, no, I don't work here. You helped that old lady before? You can't lie. I thought with my own eyes. She couldn't reach the cereal, so she asked me since I'm taller. So, you admit it. She let out an accomplished smile. I don't even know why she was satisfied with my answer. It wasn't like she really achieved anything. I did help her, but I'm not wearing a uniform. I was wearing a neon pink shirt with a cat on the front. I don't think that's a uniform for any grocery store. You should ask yourself that. Why aren't you in uniform? Karen screamed at me. I don't have a uniform. I don't work here. After yelling that, I tried to walk away, but she stepped in front of me and bumped me back a bit. Is there a problem? My Oma strolled over due to my yelling. Stay out of this. I'm trying to get this idiot here to help me find the ice cream aisle. Now, uh, for some background about my Oma. She's an older lady who used to be in the Air Force, and she is not afraid to speak her mind. She could be pretty intimidating due to the fact that she is over six feet tall. Did you just call my granddaughter an idiot? What gives you the right to talk to her that way? She seethed. She is impersonating a staff member. She is the one in the wrong. Karen went to grab me, but my Oma put her arm out in front of me. Are you joking or just foolish? Look at her. Where's her name tag? She's not even dressed in the right color for the uniform. My Oma didn't hold back her words. Like I was trying to tell you, I just helped the old lady get something that was too far out of her reach. I don't work here. I don't even live in this state. I'm just here to visit my grandmother. I gestured to my Oma. But, she said as she tried to reach around my Oma, attempting to make another grab at me. But a pretty big guy with huge muscles pushed his way in front of the lady and cut her off. Leave the kid alone. If you put your hands on, I will have no issues with arresting you. He said as he pulled out a badge, signifying he was a police officer. Her face turned white before she tried to defend herself. See what? Nope, don't say a word. Just walk away. It's not. She tried to speak again. Ma'am, I won't say it again. Stop fighting with me and leave her alone. He said with a stern voice, making Karen turn and walk away with her card. After she left, we thanked the man again, and as he was about to reply, a familiar voice called out. What's taking so long? Did you find the oatmeal I forgot? 
the nice old lady said as she rounded the corner. Well, hello again, young lady, she said with a pleasantly surprised smile on her face. Hello, ma'am. Sorry, mom, some lady was pestering this girl. Didn't even know she was the one who helped you while I was away, he responded before turning to me. Thank you for helping my mother. I told her to wait for me to get back, but she is a little stubborn. Nice old lady playfully slapped her son on the arm, making us laugh a bit. After that, we chatted with the two of them for a bit and explained to nice old lady what just happened before saying our goodbyes. Funnily enough, we later went to the ice cream aisle without Karen in sight. Never had as much satisfaction eating ice cream as I did reminiscing about Karen's face when the man showed his badge. I don't know, but I always found the trope of a nice old lady having like a, a muscle head son very amusing. I believe that was in Spongebob at one point. I don't know. It's just, it's pleasant. It's a very pleasant thing for some reason. Like, uh, such a nice sweet soul has someone to back them up should things not go the way they should for such a nice sweet soul. Oh no, I'm just a sucker for a pleasant twist. <laughs> Family friendly, Zach, come on. This story's called, Mail Karen's Low Salt Sermon to the Wrong Congregation. I'm a DSD, or a direct store delivery vendor, meaning I stock a specific brand of product only without working for the place I am actually stocking it. Name brands of beer, bread, snack cakes, chips, soda, snack crackers, some cookies, some frozen pizzas, and more are stocked by DSD vendors, and typically wear uniforms branded as such. I get mistaken a lot for someone who works at any of my route stops 10 to 20 oops sorry's per day. Most of them are just simple oopsie mistakes and they move on. No biggie. Some people, however, seem to perceive this information as irrelevant. The cast today is just me and what appears to be a thinner, off-duty Carl Winslow with his entourage of the amen section who look the types who would say honey child regularly. We'll call the dude clearly not Poirot. Please do not interpret my recollection of his accent as critical. I genuinely love his particular way of speaking and wanted to try to capture it. Plus, I wanted the people who read these aloud on YouTube to try and pronounce it as such for giggles. <laughs> Act 1. So, I was stocking my usual product when clearly not Poirot rounds the corner like he's in a hurry and without missing a beat asks me bluntly, Tammy, where that Kool-Aid? Pausing to think a second, I think it's on this aisle actually. Okay, now tell me what that flour. Flour like for baking? That I'm not sure as I'm not actually with this store. I don't really know where other stuff is much. He just breezes on past and I resume my usual thing, thinking this may be one of the many ordinary encounters. He hunts down his druthers and disappears to aisles unknown, and I go to the back to get more stuff to stock. I see a gaggle of more finely adorned ladies turn another corner, who I later discover are with him. They nod at me and shop casually down a different aisle. Act 2. I come back down the main aisle with more stuff to stock, and he rounds the corner of the other aisle they were on and asks them if they found any low salt stuff, which that aisle is known pretty well for being high salt in general. Clearly not Poirot looking over to me, tell me where that is low salt. Low salt what in particular? Of this stuff? Yeah, or anything of that low salt. We look around for a minute on that other aisle, just trying to help the guy out, despite me being totally unfamiliar with that section. I think the masses have beaten you to the low salt kinds of these items. Looks like they're sold out. You gotta have some of them low salt some around. We keep looking, and all of the low salt options are gaping holes because of the swarming masses of panic buyers lately, and lower supply of the more niche versions of everything in general. Tons of the high salt plain types, though. My doctor don't told me gotta have low salt now. Gotta go them low sodium now, you hear me? I understand, but looks like it's sold out. There's low fat in some cases, but doesn't say anything about salt. If you ask me, you should just avoid this whole aisle or just any snacks in general if you're on a low salt diet. All of this and that kind of stuff is basically high sodium. You still gotta suck me some of them low salt. Doctor say I gotta do low salt and I can't find none of them low salt. You gotta tell the store they gotta put them out low salt, you hear me? I'm not with the store, like I said before. I'm with vendor and I don't have any say in what gets ordered, and they wouldn't really listen to me anyway considering I don't work here. If you want my expert medical opinion from the School of Groceries, I suggest you not even bother with this aisle at all. 
Yeah, they probably should get out of here during the most salt. They don't have no. Mm, honey, it looked like they added them low salt. We best get a move on. He ain't even with the store. Didn't you hear him? He ain't gonna know which salt is which kind. He ain't no dietitian. He with Vendor, I mouth. Thank you. And nod to the ladies, and they nod back quietly with eye rolls and laugh a little. Clearly not Poirot, grabs a few low-fat things and holds one up to me, showing the back of it, pointing at the nutrition facts, which say 11% sodium DV per serving. Sir, I don't know whether that's good or bad. I don't know if 11% is high or low for a long list of reasons. They don't look like a low salt to me. You need to tell them, still they gotta order more of them low salt. I gotta eat now, you hear me? Sir, the stuff on this aisle is all junk food. You ain't gotta have none of this stuff. Clearly not Poirot and Entourage trapes off and I don't hear anything back from them, and I take my stock elsewhere and put it out. At least I came away with a fun story to share that didn't get too heated despite his apparent disregard for any facts anyone could offer him. It's a wonder that doctor managed to convince Clearly Not Poirot to change his diet to begin with. <laughs> First off, good writing. I absolutely love when people do uh, stylized dialogue or whatever the hell you want to call that, when people type out someone's specific way of speaking. It's fun to know what sort of character they're trying to portray. And this guy clearly a character. Very good writing, very good story, please share more. This story's called, I'm a landscaper, not a construction worker. A bit of background. Before the fire department, I started work at a landscaping company which I still work with to this day. Mind that our uniforms consisted of khaki pants and a bright green shirt with our company logo on the back. I was outside of an alternate office location waiting for my boss to arrive since I'd gotten there quite early. Right around the corner, there was construction going on. Our uniforms are a bit similar in terms of the shirts, minus the logo, and a hard hat since we were going to be working near the construction. Safety regulations and that jazz. This hard hat also had our company logo on it. As I was waiting for my boss to arrive, a person who I would assume is the manager of the construction approached me from behind. I didn't notice him as I was on my phone and didn't hear his footsteps. He taps me on the shoulder to get my attention. As I turned to face him, he had the most arrogant, crud-eating grin I'd ever seen. I'm guessing this was due to the fact that he thought he'd caught a worker slacking off and could exercise his authority. Dialogue proceeded like this. Cast? Arrogant prick. Me. Why aren't you working? Where's your boss? Excuse me? I said, where's your boss? Shouldn't you be working? I'm waiting for my boss to get here. He should already be here, right? Go ahead and get that stack of bricks for me. This way. He motions to a pile of bricks in the corner. At this point, I wondered what was going on and figured it out pretty quickly. Oh, alright. You think I'm with the construction guys around the corner. Sorry, man. I'm not with them. What are you talking about? I saw you here yesterday. This was before the virus hit, and the place was bustling with hundreds of people. Yes, I was here yesterday, but not with construction. Yes, you were. I saw you. Sir, I'm with the landscaping company that takes care of trash cleanup and mowing the grass as well as taking care of the flower beds and mulch. He looks at me like I'm crazy up until I show him the large, bold company logo on the back of my shirt where he approached me from. He then appears to have just seen a ghost, turns around, and leaves me alone. The end. Honestly, that sounds like a mistake I would make and doesn't seem too bad of a situation other than the potentially bad boss who got all horned up from just a little taste of exercising his perceived power. This story's called, Today I Fudged Up by Not Remembering to Turn My Bluetooth Headphones Off. So, I usually listen to audiobooks before I go to bed and wind down and relax, and I use earbuds so that I can lay comfortably in bed. I also have a pair of over-ear wireless headphones that I use frequently. What I didn't realize is that when you plug the buds in, it auto-disconnects the Bluetooth ones, but of course, doesn't turn them off. Cue to about 2 a.m. and I woke up needing to pee, realizing I had disconnected the earbuds in my sleep. I removed them and thought I heard faint voices like someone was in the house outside the bedroom door. Instantly, my heart is pounding and I grab a bowie knife I have on the bedside table and try to silently creep towards the door to hear better. Positive that I hear at least one person, I open the door slowly, knife raised, and tentatively step out. I begin searching for the speaker. In hindsight, probably turning on a light or saying something would have been a better idea than walking around the house naked with a knife. That's when I heard the voice say that the astropathic connection is not reliable. My brain goes full potato and I say out loud, what are the odds I'm having a break-in by a 40k nerd? 
Realizing I'm an idiot and not the victim of a home invasion, I go to put the knife in its sheath, miss, stab my hand, lights on, successfully put the blade away, found the headphones on the couch, turn them off, lights off, adrenaline still high, I get back in bed and watch the sunrise unable to fall back asleep. And they also posted a pic of stabbed hand to end the don't have a weapon you're not comfortable with. Yeah, definitely don't, and especially don't have a weapon you're not comfortable with on your bedside table, because that, well, that's just going to end poorly, as you can see, or not really see, because we're not going to put that on here. Also, I'm kind of curious, does having a weapon at your, you know, immediate disposal, like, does that heighten your fight or flight response? Because there are those memes of like, uh, when, you, when a gun owner finally hears someone break into their house and it shows someone getting all excited because they're like, finally, finally, we get to do it. Like, does that make you more trigger happy? Obviously, if you're used to it, if you've been raised around weapons and, you know, you're not like obsessed with them, then probably not. But those who are new gun owners or something like that, I wonder what effect it has mentally. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode.